assembling clutch packs, we're going to be taking our first measurements. Um, when you tear things apart, sometimes we'll measure things. Not always, but if we're trying to figure out what's wrong with the transmission and we didn't have a good guess before we opened it up, sometimes we'll measure things like how much free play there is in the input shaft and a few other things. In this case, we're looking to measure three things on reassembly. Um, that's going to be our input, our front and our rear clutch, and that's going to be uh, free play on the input shaft when we're all the way done. Tonight we're going to do two measurements. We're going to check both of our clutches um, and compare them to a set of specifications that I'm going to give to you. Um, we're also going to start putting things like our planetary sets back in. We're going to show you how to put this over any clutch back in. That one sometimes goes easy, sometimes it'll be a challenge. We'll see who finds it as a challenge tonight. Um, and if there is time, once we get our gears and planetaries back in, we may even open up our pump, do a couple of quick measurements, um, and reassemble it. That's kind of my goal for tonight, so hopefully we'll make it there. Not only will you get your um, form for your take the transmission apart and fix it, before I reassemble the whole thing, put it in the car, refill it with fluid, go for a drive and realize second gear doesn't exist. You want to figure that out on the bench, not on the test drive. Um, I think I only had to learn that once in my career. Of course, I was lucky. I had, for some reason, left a governor tube off. So you know what the transmission did? You get first, you get reverse. It doesn't know how fast it's going, so you don't get second or third. So, but you don't want to have that kind of experience. So I'll have these, the back page is the tolerances that we'll be working with in a little bit. Um, in fact, I'm going to demonstrate that now because I think our first one, uh, I know that's the front clutch. So we're actually going to jump to the second line, then we'll come back to my bench and do the first one. So we have already reassembled the rear clutch. That's this guy right here. There should be some movement when you wiggle it up and down. If there isn't, then something's probably stuck where it shouldn't be. But what we do need to do with this is take some measurements to see if there's enough free play in the clutches. Once this thing goes into its neutral position, so I go in the driveway and I put it in a neutral part, I don't want the car to move anymore, so these have to let go of each other. If they are too tight, too packed together, they rub just a little bit and you're going to feel the car want to creep everywhere. You're burning up clutches, the car's moving like it shouldn't, that's not a good thing. We go the other direction where there's way too much tolerance in there. Well now we go to engage this, this transmission and the piston has to move a longer distance so you get a delay in the shift, which nobody wants. And the other part that we run into is if that piston goes its full travel and it's just barely now starting to squeeze them together, it's not really compressing your clutches, it's going to slip and burn. So we have a range that we want that tells us it's okay. And that's this guy right here. My rear clutch, it says, uh, we're, we're not going to use millimeters because we're in America. We don't, we don't use a metric system that makes sense. <laughs> we use the one that makes no sense. So we're over here at 0 0.028 to 0 0.043. That's my range. Now if you're not familiar with feeler gauges, it's one that we can use. And we're also going to use dial indicators if you want to try that one. So this guy, has everyone seen these before? Yeah. Yep. Usually you buy a tool kit and it's in there and people just look at it and go, I don't know what this thing is. Chuck it, right? It's one of those ways they can say, hey, here's 20 pieces in your 25 piece tool kit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if I look at it, what I see is on the bottom I have metrics. So if you want to go to millimeters, if you want to try and be a, a modern day human, there's 0.71 to uh, 1.1, so we can go. I'm going to have to stack a couple and add them together. I do have some that are a little bit thicker, so I'm going to add mine anyway. 0.028 to 0.43, so it's a 0.028. Let me get a 20. There we are, a 20. Stack those together. That gives me what I need for this measurement. Okay, so let's see if this fits in between my clutches and my plate. Well, in this case, I'm going to do the snap ring. You'll note between the snap ring and this, it fits. Well, that's where the clutches get squished to. So if that fits, what it means is it's wide enough. Now what I need to happen is I can't go any bigger than 043. If more than 043 fits in this gap, what does that tell me? It's loose. Too big, right? This fits, so I know I'm not too tight. Let's go up to 043 and see if that fits. What I want to happen right now is for it not to be able to slide in there. Let's see, there is a... Okay, so that's going to be 044, close enough. If I can take these together, and I just took a uh, 019 and 025, so if you add that up together, 
044, right? So I'm a little bit over, but close enough to what I need. If I can cram that in there, what it's telling me is there's too much slop in these clutches. And I can't even force it in there, right? So what that tells me is it's not too loose, and because the other one fits, it's not too tight. So what can I say about this clutch? This is all good. It's good, right? It passes. I put it in there, I'm within the range of what the engineer said was okay. So this works, especially if you have feeler gauges with a better range to it. There is another option, and I actually prefer this option, and the reason I prefer it is it will give me the exact number without trying to fit a whole bunch of different gauges together. Who's familiar with this tool? Oh good. So I've seen this before. Place. Well the challenge is always how does this go together? It's usually what it is. Hmm. I swear sometimes I feel like I forget. Let's see how I do tonight. But this is going to give me a range from zero all the way up to the tolerance. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zero this thing out, lift the plates and whatever it goes to, that's the range. That's how much uh, free play this thing has. So, let's see. Now this one I think I need a different gauge. I need the one where the hole comes the other way. All right, there's one of these where this thing sits straight up and down, so I grabbed the wrong one, but I'm gonna give you a quick visual on this and then you can check one out if you like. But basically what you do is you set this up so it's on your plates, you turn this guy to zero, and when you lift your plates up and down, it lifts the needle and you can see the needle move. Basically what I do is I set this thing, and let's go like this, there we go, come on, go right there. I set this to zero, and as I lift the plates up and down, it swings, and when it goes as far as it'll go, that's my measurement. So if it swung all the way to here, I'm 030, that'd be intolerance. If I came down here, that would be outer tolerance. It's only 005, what am I supposed to have? 028, right? So this works, we'll probably use feeler gauges tonight. I just grabbed the wrong one on my rush out the tolling door. It doesn't matter how you measure it. And the bottom line is if you are within that range, you can as a technician make the assumption these clutches should grab properly. They're not gonna grab too soon. They're not gonna be lazy. They're not gonna give me a bump shift. But that's what our target is. So let's start with this. 